Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, and welcome to Soundbites Cases. In this Soundbites module entitled Part 3 of Bedside Ultrasound of the Gallbladder, we're going to go on further on our discussion of the pathology found on bedside imaging of the right upper quadrant. Hopefully first you've reviewed Parts 1 and 2 in the series on bedside ultrasound of the gallbladder and understand the right upper quadrant exam performance and normal anatomy as well as the ultrasound findings of gallstones. In this module, Part 3, we're going to specifically review the spectrums of findings found in acute cholecystitis and we'll learn the primary and secondary diagnostic findings in this disease. The majority of cases of acute cholecystitis that present to the emergency department are going to be calculus or associated with cholesterol gallstones. While acalculus cholecystitis does exist, it's rarely seen in the emergency department, usually seen in patients who have been hospitalized, those who have had surgery recently, or those who have immunocompromised states such as HIV or diabetes. Acute cholecystitis is usually caused by obstruction of the cystic duct by a gallstone resulting in pathology, and the list of sequelae include gallbladder distension, gallbladder edema, infection or acute cholecystitis, ischemia of the gallbladder wall resulting in necrosis and perforation of the actual gallbladder. What are the clinical signs of acute cholecystitis that we're examining for at the bedside of the patient with acute right upper quadrant abdominal pain? Well, the primary diagnostic ultrasound finding is going to be the presence of gallstones with a positive sonographic Murphy sign, or tenderness over the gallbladder with pressure down on the ultrasound probe. These findings have a 92% positive predictive value for acute cholecystitis as found in this article by Dr. Rawls et al. in Radiology. It's an older article from 1985, but one that's often mentioned on discussion of acute cholecystitis. Now, there's multiple secondary signs of cholecystitis that we should go through, and these include a distended gallbladder greater than 10 centimeters in length, a thickened gallbladder wall that's usually mentioned as greater than 3 millimeters in width, also, one may be able to see fluid in the gallbladder wall or edema within the gallbladder wall as shown by a stripe of fluid within the wall. Also, we can have pericholecystic fluid or a line of fluid outside the gallbladder wall as a result of inflammation or early perforation. Now, the presence of these secondary signs of acute cholecystitis does improve our diagnostic positive predictive value, but only increases the yield from 92% to 95%. So it's really most important to look for the primary diagnostic signs of acute cholecystitis. Here's a video clip from a patient who presented with right upper quadrant pain and fever. And as we look at the gallbladder, the first thing we see is the presence of multiple gallstones within the neck of the gallbladder. Also, we're going to examine here the anterior wall of the gallbladder, and notice with the small indicator arrow, I'm just pointing out that anterior wall. Notice that it appears thickened. Now, here I'm just indicating the posterior wall of the gallbladder, and notice that it's difficult to measure the posterior wall due to an artifact known as posterior acoustic enhancement. The sound waves race through the gallbladder, making it difficult to measure that posterior wall as it lights up. Here we're going to put calipers down on the anterior gallbladder wall and notice that we have a measurement of 4 millimeters indicative of a thickened gallbladder wall as we defined prior in the last slide as greater than 3 millimeters in width. This is a video showing two views of the gallbladder taken from a patient with right upper quadrant pain and fever. We see long axis to the left and short axis view to the right. This shows that it's important to image the gallbladder in both long and short axis configurations as I think on these two video clips that the gallbladder wall anteriorly is better seen on the short axis view to the right. And we see here a concretion of gallstones within the gallbladder lumen and a thickened anterior wall of the gallbladder. This patient also had a positive sonographic Murphy's sign. Here I'm going to still that last image down of the gallbladder and short axis configuration and we see the anterior wall of the gallbladder well delineated here. Notice the calipers across with a measurement of 9 millimeters fulfilling the criteria of a thickened wall. This video clip shows another finding of acute cholecystitis. In addition to the multiple gallstones that we see within the gallbladder lumen, we appreciate a thickened anterior gallbladder wall, and within the wall of the gallbladder we see a stripe of black fluid consistent with gallbladder wall edema. And here with the small indicator arrow, I'm just going to trace out that area of gallbladder wall edema within that anterior wall of the gallbladder. Interestingly enough, at surgery, the gallbladder was found to be very edematous, inflamed, and the wall was necrotic. 
Let's now inspect another video clip from an elderly patient with right upper quadrant pain and fever. And we see here on imaging of the gallbladder, a distended gallbladder stretching out across the video clip here. Notice the large concretion of gallstones packed in at the neck of the gallbladder. But let's look closely at that anterior wall of the gallbladder. And we notice as shown with the small indicator arrow, a stripe of fluid that is going to be pericholecystic fluid outside that anterior wall of the gallbladder. Now the patient also had a positive sonographic Murphy sign with a great deal of tenderness on pressure down with the probe over this gallbladder. So as we mentioned in part one of the ultrasound modules on gallbladder sonography, it's always important to look at a different plane on imaging of the gallbladder. So here's a subcostal view of the same gallbladder. We see again the multiple concretion of gallstones within the gallbladder neck as seen inferiorly towards the image here. Notice the shadowing off the back of the gallbladder. And we can see here the large stripe of pericholecystic fluid that is shown by that dark area of fluid that wraps around the anterior wall of the gallbladder. So, acute cholecystitis on bedside sonography. Let's wrap this module by looking at this video clip for the multiple signs of acute cholecystitis that are present here. First of all, we notice the distended gallbladder with a significant load of gallstones stretching across the posterior wall of the gallbladder. Incidentally, the patient had a positive sonographic Murphy sign, fulfilling the primary diagnostic signs of acute cholecystitis. Next, let's take a look at this video clip for some of the secondary diagnostic signs of acute cholecystitis. As we look at the anterior wall of the gallbladder, we see here that it's thickened and inflamed. We also see a stripe of pericholecystic fluid just outside the anterior wall of the gallbladder. So we see here some more of the secondary signs of acute cholecystitis. In conclusion, thanks for tuning in for the Sound Bites module going over part three of bedside ultrasound of the gallbladder. Hopefully now you understand the primary diagnostic signs of acute cholecystitis on bedside imaging, that is the presence of gallstones and a sonographic Murphy sign. Recall that these two findings have a very high yield for the presence of acute cholecystitis. I hope also that you can identify some of the secondary diagnostic signs of acute cholecystitis, that is a large gallbladder or distended gallbladder greater than 10 centimeters with gallbladder wall thickening greater than 3 millimeters, the presence of gallbladder wall edema, and also finally the presence of pericholecystic fluid. So now I believe you're ready to evaluate patients during your next shift for gallbladder disease and acute cholecystitis. And I look forward to seeing you in the future as Sano Access continues.